Well, we're back down here at Zuccotti Park, and uh, this is actually the evening of the day that uh, the owners of the park had uh, threatened to move everybody out for the cleaning, and they eventually backed down. But it's been rainy all day and kind of crappy. We're going to go over in the park and uh, see what's cooking over there tonight. Well, I guess the uh, owners of Zuccotti Park uh, gave them a deadline of uh, moving out this morning so they could power clean it, but then they changed their mind and uh, evidently the local occupiers have been spending a lot of time trying to clean up the place, but there still are these uh, huge piles of stuff under these tarps. Well, this is a big change. This is the first time I've seen anything like this. It's a sign that says, Greeting to all. While at Liberty Plaza, our cause and our security depends on everybody respecting certain protocol when in Liberty Plaza sobriety, Liberty Plaza is a sober zone. Being intoxicated in Liberty Plaza is inappropriate and weakens our mission in many ways. Be sure to uphold this culture of sobriety in yourself and others. Respect others and their property. Respect and care for yourself and your own belongings. Respect others and their belongings. Regard Liberty Plaza as a home we are sharing. And Liberty Plaza and its flowers. Keep it clean. This plaza and these flowers are important to the community. Our ability to uphold the beauty of this park well represents our commitment to a better world. Okay. Hey, somebody's finally starting to lay down the laws. We've had this for weeks, actually. You've had it for weeks. I've been down here every day for a week. I haven't seen it before. What we happened? Passed out 10,000 of them, and there's one at everything. No kidding. What happened with the thing this morning, the uh, proposed cleanup? I don't understand the question. There was going to be a cleanup. The... You don't see how clean it is? Well, they said that they were going to move you guys for the power up, cleaner. Need to come in. You did a good job of cleaning it up. Okay. Thank you. Well, they've got a whole line of uh, satellite trucks here, and I think uh, in certain ways this is uh, turning into a whole different thing now. It's going to be a battle of the medias, the different spins. Oh boy, this is good. Ron Paul Revolution. <laughs> Oh, we're definitely getting the cross section here. I wonder where the Tea Party section is. Ron Paul says end the war, end the Fed, end the IRS. All right. We have more wealth than half of the nation. So 400 people have more control or more wealth than 150 million of us. It's, it's, it's utter insanity for anybody to not see that insanity, to not see that this is a sustained movement. And uh, it, it's just, it's unfortunate because this is the, this is the conversation we need to have. And so it was really dismaying to see complete distortions of people at the UN and, um, and other like really good organizations that are taking care of the triple, quadruple bottom line. People who are thinking about the forefront of where we need to move our economy and didn't even have time to watch the video. But I heard straight up, they were like, that was a really poorly edited video and they really like didn't really capture anything and it's a shame it was a real missed opportunity and i guess i would beg the new york times to do a better job and to not lie because they lied they outright wrote things that i did not say there is almost all of the quotes or all of the generalizations welcome to the new york times journalism department this good man were packaged prior to this interview I have a blog. It's called a globalpublicservant.net. A globalpublicservant.net. If you really want to see the truth, get off of these these the media that has been responsible for this economic economic crash. We knew about this credit crunch years before. I was studying it in undergrad. Actually, like developing models that were like, oh my gosh, there's going to be an enormous crash in the next few years, and this was in 2006. What the hell was New York Times? And this is what they're doing now. And 
uh, I, you know, my mom is an avid New York Times reader, and they do some good stuff here and there. But my gosh, our media is piss poor. Get on the live stream. Find out about this for yourself. Don't listen to any of these cronies because they're the ones who are making the world the way it has been for the last 30 years. And we all know, anybody who's got half a brain knows that in the last 30 years, our country has been systematically dismantled to become a third world country. Do you have any recommendations or any suggestions on, on how to solve any of these problems? Open source everything. Okay, that's a good one. We have, if, if you want to solve, uh, so one of my good friends, uh, Britt O'Reilly, she's pioneered the application of the open source methodology, which is technological, it's a technological method of uh, licensing one's, one's intellectual property so that it is a commons. Like basically, whatever code you make is now global commons. And uh, it's taken over. You look at the explosion of open source and, and technology and programming, it's an undeniable, perfect economic efficiency. As, a, as an economist, as somebody who studied economics thoroughly, I'm not a PhD in any way, but you know, information passes a lot faster nowadays. You don't necessarily need to have a PhD, but if you can show your smarts, this is what I've studied extensively. What do you think about prosecuting some of the uh, yeah. offenders, some of the exactly. laws yeah. that I have mean, been broken? Holding people accountable. You can't, these, these folks, these frat boys who are playing, a, creating a casino economy that leaves over a billion people on the planet starving. There are a billion people starving. How the heck can we say that we're in a progressive age? I did a lot of work as people like that need to be held freak accountable. And, and then it, it shows in the irony of that that we have over two million people incarcerated in our prison system currently. What about the legislation and the, uh, the government? Well, Do you hold them responsible for any of this at all? Yeah, we can. I mean, this is the focus of our movement here in New York needs to work on the shadow government. The, people the shadow are, government. The people who are in control of our media, the people who are in control of the lobbying, the people who make puppets out of our legislation. Do we know who those people are? You got any names? Oh, man. I mean, off the top of my head, I mean, just Murdoch is like one. Murdoch. Least, you know, Rupert Murdoch. There's a bunch of these guys. Fox like, News. I mean, just follow the money, sniff it follow out. Follow the money. George yeah. Soros? Soros is the, one of the most disgusting people on the planet. <laughs> that you, got, you got a good one there. So, I mean, I also, you have to have sympathy for these people. Cause yes, we do. Happy. We They're do. horribly, horribly unhappy. They're paranoid half of the freaking time about the fact that we're going to be, we're going to revolt against them or take their stuff. Do you know, has there been any official uh, list of demands released from the group? We're not doing a list of demands. You're not going to do any, so. why not? I, so I have been spearheading of the project for the list of demands uh, since the first week of the, or about a week and a half after the occupation began, and uh, we've been working with over a hundred or two hundred of the occupants, probably like 150 to 200 people who have been working on this document that would serve to to essentially meet that need for, for about a month now, right? Yeah, but you have to understand, like, we spent most of our time just securing this space and dealing with police brutality for the first, like, two to three weeks. So we're getting on our feet, and, you know, and the, and the media is still taking low blows to us and asking us, like, hey, what's your stuff? What, what's your, what's going on? And, and you know, we're, we're being terrorized constantly. I think we finally hit a tipping point now, though, where that's not necessarily the case. What do you think of some of the lists that people like uh, Bernie Sanders and uh, Paul Krugman has put, have put forward? Have you seen any of those? Oh, well, on Krugman's, uh, I, I, I think it was on Charlie Rose last oh, night. Good. He's great. Um, no, yeah, I haven't Charlie had a Rose. I mean, honestly, I I've been here for 28 days, 20 and 27 nights. The next couple of, I mean, just working 24 hours a day. Uh, most of us who have been here have had all of our possessions stolen. I mean, all of my research, all of my writing, everything's been stolen. And so, like, it's, it's they get your really laptop? hard to get out of this place. And, and we're, soon I need a recharge. A lot of us need a recharge. Yeah. Unfortunately, I wish I could be that much more on the up and up about what's going outside of here. But we're always trying to keep things here alive. Tell us what your website was again. A global public servant. .net. A global public servant. Thanks for catching my bike. Yeah, sure, no worries. All right. Uh, Thank you. And good luck.